Many moms wonder what to do when their baby turns six months. I have had three babies and I have successfully weaned all three of them. So I'm going to share my weaning essentials. The things that I use to help my babies get used to food, introduce food to them. Let's get into it. So before we even start, if you are a returning Sunny, what's up my Sunny? And if you are new here, please subscribe. We share a lot of content on motherhood, marriage, and lifestyle. You're, you're going to learn a lot from us. So um, I usually introduce solids to my babies on the day that they turn six months. I'm just that mom. <laughs> I will wait for the exact day that you turn six months, and then we'll start slowly. So I usually start with fruit to just ease their tummy into solids because they've been used to milk, breast milk for my case, for most moms, there's breast milk and formula. So I introduce these other foods at that point. So what I usually do is start with purees. So the thing has to be really smooth. I will smoothen mango, um, sometimes avocado, Sometimes banana, banana very little because it can cause constipation, but those soft, soft foods, you can boil a carrot and mash it up or blend it. Just introduce soft foods slowly. Then at about seven months, I, I, I make sure that what I'm giving them is not so smooth. So it has a little bit of texture, but they can also easily take it down. So one thing you have to know is that babies have a natural gag reflex. So when they feel like, when, they, when there's something that cannot go down their throat, they're going to bring it back. They're not going to swallow it. You'll, you'll see them do, uh, uh. so many parents fear that the child is choking, but it's just their natural gag reflex that is bringing it back. Um, so for the last two babies, my second and my third, I try to do baby led weaning. Now, with my first son, I was a new mom. I didn't know what to do, so I bought a blender and everything was smooth. Until 12 months, I was blending everything. So you'll find that my son is a bit of a picky eater because all he knew was smooth things. But with my second, I had learned. So I would leave a bit of texture. Like at around seven, eight months, I leave a bit of texture. By nine months, the food is chunky because the child can actually chew it. Even if they don't have teeth, the gums are so strong so they can chew it. So if you're a first time mom, let me save you from having a picky eater. One of the ways that you can do that is the texture of the foods when you're introducing food. Okay, now that we have that out of the way. Um, when you're introducing food, introduce the normal foods that you eat at home, pumpkin, avocado, mangoes, the fruits that you eat at home, do that. Don't now go buy, I don't know, figs, um, peaches, things you're not going to find in a casero market. Please introduce things that you eat at home, even matoke, ginats. What I would advise is maybe don't put salt and don't put sugar for a child below 12 months, but introduce the foods that you eat at home, the Irish, the sweet potatoes, the pumpkin, butternut, do the normal foods. That way your child, when your child is older than a year, they're not picky and saying, ew, I don't eat pumpkin <laughs> because they've been eating pumpkin since day zero. And another thing is to boost the fat content. When the child is between six and 12 months, they need a bit of a fat content. So what you can do is maybe add some ghee, you can add butter, you can add olive oil, coconut oil is also good. Um, just pay attention to allergies. Some kids are allergic to some of those oils. You can also add, some people add margarine, uh, but butter is better. You can add some plain yogurt. You can add some cooking cream as long as there's no sugar, no salt, no sodium, all those other things. Um, another way to boost fat is avocado. Avocado is very rich in healthy fat. Um, so introduce all the different food groups and even the meats. Some people don't give their kids meat. Please give your child meat. At six months, give them the bone, let the chicken bone for the drumstick and let them bite on it. Don't hold your child back. I held my first bone back and we have suffered through that. He's now getting better because he sees his siblings just going for the food. So he also comes for it. So some of the items that I make sure I have is a high chair. 
This is one that we'll put at the dining table so the child has meals with us. So he also feels like he's part of the family. Why I like this one is that it has a table. It has a table and this one, the table moves. So you can put the baby's food on there for finger led weaning at about six, seven months. Um, please research on baby led weaning. The food has to be cut in a certain way. The child has to be able to hold it, hold it properly so they can eat it. It shouldn't be small and in, in those sizes that can make the baby choke. So this one, we can wash this. This can be his plate. We wash this, put it on there and then put his food and he plays with his food, he feels it. Also that feeling and having a relationship with food <laughs> helps them love their food and have a good relationship with food. So he's, easy, he's able to sit with us at the dining table and feel like he's part of the family because he is. And I also like that it has this wipeable material so once the baby is done, because babies are messy, they will eat messy. The food will be in the hair, the food will be in the eyes, in the ears, everywhere on the chair. So this is easy to wipe and wash down. That's step one. For me, it's a high chair. Some people don't mind carrying the babies on the lap. Do what do you? These are my essentials. The next is a bottle. So you'll notice that I don't have the bottles with the nipples because for me after six months i just feel like let's graduate from that it's easier to wean your baby off of cp cups and these 360 cups than it is the the nipple bottle so i usually move to this especially if it's not milk if it's like juice water it's better when you use either a cp cup or even an open cup and um, this 360 cup those are the first two the next is we get bowls Mm -hmm. So you can get one like this because this one is, 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 it can help you when you're moving out of the home. So you just put a cover, you can put cling film and move out of the home with your baby's food and you're able to feed them. There are others that um, have that suction. They're made out of silicone. They have the suction and can stick on the table, on the baby's high chair table. So they, they don't throw it away. This one, they will toss. <laughs> yeah, so you need the bowls. These bowls are from Tommy Tippy. They come in a set of four. And these spoons are also Tommy Tippy. Now, what I love with these spoons is that they are heat sensitive. So if something is too hot, it's going to turn and turn and it's going to turn white. So that way you know the food is too hot because many of us burn our babies. I have done it. Most moms have been guilty <laughs> of doing that. So I like these ones that they are heat sensitive. So if you're a first time mom and you don't know how hot should my baby's food be, this would be essential for you. So you feed your baby. You can also give them another spoon. This one comes in a set of four. So you can give them their spoon. You have yours so that they also are participating in eating, feeding themselves. The next thing that you need is a bib. Now why I like this bib is that it traps food here. So you find that Sunshine, Sunshine is my third baby, he grabs food that has fallen in his bib and he goes on to eat it. So I love this one and it will also help reduce the mess. Not prevent it, but just reduce the mess. This video has been proudly sponsored by Luciana Baby and Kids Store. They have clothes, they have baby high chairs, they also have the low chairs, they have the bottles, the spoons, they have everything you need from hospital, if you need a mama kit, if you need your baby's newborn onesies, overalls, socks, mittens, everything you can think of that you need for a child, they have until a child of 12 years, so surely. They are your one-stop shop for everything that you need. Another tip that I would share with a parent is Try to have meals with your child. So now many of us end up feeding our children like alone, but let them be involved in the meal. If you're having breakfast, have breakfast with your child. So they also see how you eat. Like, mm, you use the spoon and then you do like this. So they also try it. That way they learn and involve them in the meals. Have conversation while you're eating. Let, let eating time, meal time be a family bonding time. And the other thing that I would advise parents is 
don't limit your child's test buds. Don't say, ah, uh -uh, my child can't eat, I don't know, G-nuts. Don't limit them. Give them the foods, let them decide. I don't like beans. I honestly don't like eating beans. Even when I was a child, I didn't like eating beans. But now, I'm not going to start my child on that note. Just because I don't like beans doesn't mean he doesn't have the potential to like beans. So introduce foods to your child. One thing I would say is if your child is below 12 months, one thing that you shouldn't give them is honey. Whether they have cough or what to sweeten their things, please don't give them honey. It's very poisonous and can lead to death. Mm. So something that I didn't say about the high chair, I like that it has these seat belts so you're able to strap your baby. If your baby is like mine, he'll try to stand up in the chair. Imagine my son is just nine months, but he tries to stand up in his chair. So this straps him there so he's able to stay there. And now it's especially important when they are toddlers. It's so hard to get a toddler to sit in one place, especially if they are an extrovert. So this helps them to stay in one place, have their meal and be done. So another thing that I learned while I was winning my child is that meal time has a certain period. Have you ever realized that you don't a normal person doesn't sit down and is eating for one hour, unless you're eating like a five course meal. In about 15, 20 minutes, you're done with your meal. So after that time, don't leave your baby there and he has to finish his food. No, at that time he's done. Take away the food, wait for the next meal time. So one of the ways that we do it, at six months, the baby is eating one meal. He eats one meal, then at seven months, we graduate to two meals. Then at about 7.5, eight months, we do three meals. He'll do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So sometimes you'll find that his meal is mangoes and yogurt. Sometimes you'll find it's porridge. Sometimes you'll find it maybe it's cereal, but you keep changing out his things, his meals, and make sure they're always nutritious and make sure he's having meals with you. In between, you can have some snacks. Snack can be a fruit, it can be juice, but limit the juice um, for a baby that is younger than eight months. Give the, it's better to have the whole fruit. So give them a mango. If it's apple, make sure you boil it and mash it a bit because apple can be a bit tough and can be a choking hazard. And um, yeah, just keep monitoring your child. Make, make them have a good association with mealtime. Let mealtime not be a sad affair. That's when they're shouting at me. They're forcing me. I have to sit in my chair and stay there for one hour because I've not yet finished my food. Let them have, help them to have a good association with food and meal time. So hygiene tips for a weaning baby. For about between the age of six and eight months, if you can wash the things yourself, do. If you can't, then teach your house help or the people who are helping you with the baby to do it. Wash them normally with dish soap and a sponge. And then if you don't have a sterilizer, you can pour boiling water over them so that it burns, whatever. <laughs> Pour hot water over them, the spoons, the dishes, everything, and keep them separately. Don't mix them with your dishes. Don't put them on your dish rack. Keep them separately so that the baby's things don't get contaminated. And then also the, the table, make sure you wipe it down properly with soap, scrub it down, then wipe it and keep it clean. The chair as well. Something also that I learned is for diary, you need to go slow on diary. So when you're introducing diary, start with like plain yogurt and butter and see how your child tolerates it. And then after 12 months is when you can expand that food group. You can go to milk. Most people give the baby cow, cow's milk. There's a certain way you're supposed to dilute that milk. So talk to your pediatrician and, and find out the different ways to dilute that milk because it can easily cause constipation. And some of these porridges, the, the porridge flours that has, are sold in the supermarket are pre-mixed and some of them might have milk and that can cause constipation. So watch out for that. When your child has constipation give them a bit of water i would say about 30 meals not more than 30 meals for a baby between six and seven months don't give them more than 30 meals if you're breastfeeding continue to breastfeed them if you notice that they have constipation look back and see what has my child eaten what could be the cause of constipation? Bananas are, are known to cause constipation. Um, milk is also sometimes causes constipation, cow's milk. So look back and then limit that. Or first stop it and see how your child progresses and then maybe introduce it a bit later. But remember, don't limit your child's palate. So at this age, six, seven months that our children 
create their relationship with food. If you have any questions regarding weaning, introducing food to your baby, breastfeeding, leave them in the comments and I will surely be answering them. I'm Daisy and I am rooting for you. Bye!